All right. Well, welcome everyone um, to the accounting bootcamp with RSM. Thank, thank you to RSM for being here and uh, putting this on and just kind of helping our accounting students figure out how to be accountants. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Emily Newberger. I'm the employer relations manager at the Block Career Center. Um, so uh, feel free to chat me any questions you have throughout the Zoom, or you can put them in the chat for everyone to see. Um, we do have time reserved for question and answer. Um, you can also uh, raise your hand, use that feature if you'd rather verbally ask your question rather than type it out. So whatever works for you, those are the resources we have for you today. And with that, I don't wanna take up too much more of RSM's time. So I'm gonna turn it over to Shalise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, for inviting us. Uh, so my name is Shalise Adamson. Um, joining me uh, is, uh, oh, and I'm an audit and tax recruiter for RSM. Um, joining me is also um, our consulting uh, recruiter. Her name is Amy. Uh, so I sit in Kansas City. Amy sits in St. Louis. Uh, we both cover uh, the state of Missouri for RSM. Um, so essentially, uh, we've divided um, today's activity into three parts. Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, uh, we'd like to connect with you. Um, so here is a QR code um, that we'd love for you to just scan on your phone. Uh, it'll enable us, ena enable you to share some information with us um, for us to be able to connect with you after today's event. Um, we'll also put this QR code back up for a little bit longer at the end. Okay, so essentially the three parts we're going to, to have today, um, approximately from now until 1230, um, we've invited a partner from each of our lines of business to come and talk about the accounting industry and careers uh, in general. Um, and then Amy and I, uh, for from about 1230 to one, we'll talk more specifically about RSM and who we are, uh, what the recruiting timeline looks like. We'll talk to you about our scholarships, uh, how to get an internship, things like that. Uh, and then at about one o'clock, we'll have um, some of our associates join us who have all completed internships with RSM uh, and now are either working full time with RSM or will be working full time with RSM soon. So um, without further ado, I'll do some introductions. Um, so first of all, again, um, your moderators uh, for today uh, is going to be Amy and myself. Amy, would you like to speak briefly? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy Williams. Uh, so as Shelley said, I am her uh, partner in crime. So I sit in the St. Louis, Missouri office. I've been with the firm a little over two years, and I specifically work with the consulting side of the business. So I cover Missouri, like Shelley said, both Kansas City, St. Louis, and then just very randomly Philadelphia as well. Uh, so super excited to be here um, and spend the afternoon with you all. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna have each of our partners uh, introduce themselves briefly. So uh, we'll start with Ross, I believe. So Ross, if you'd like to introduce yourself, um, you know, kind of talk for two or three minutes about, about your background. Sure, I'm Ross Franken. I'm a tax partner with RSM. I've been with the firm 25 years last August. Um, I'm an Iowa State grad and a, I have a master's in accounting from KU. Uh, I started my career with Arthur Anderson for six years and then I joined uh, RSM 25 years ago. Uh, I lead our industrial products and consumer products industry team along with being kind of a tax leader. Okay. And then next we have Jim. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit, Jim, please? Hello, I'm Jim Krizak. Uh, I've been with RSM for 34 years. Uh, I spent my first 15 years in our Des Moines, Iowa office, and then I transferred down to Kansas City about 20 years ago to head up our audit practice here in Kansas City. Um, you know, my specialties include uh, public company work. Um, I work with a lot of tech companies here in Kansas City, and I work with a lot of portfolio companies of private equity. Okay. And then I can't see, did Greg make it in? I don't think so. Okay. Um, okay. We'll, we'll plug him in. We also um, should have Greg Maddox joining us uh, from our consulting group, but he sounds like he's a little bit delayed. 
Um, so what we'd like to do is, again, this is a panel. This is for you. This is what you'd like to know. Um, so we're opening it up to questions, again, about um, the accounting industry, public versus private. Uh, any questions that you may have as um, students about the accounting industry? And while we get started, um, you can either put them in the chat or you can raise your hand. Oh, here comes Greg. We can go back. Oh, can I go back? Oh, I do see that Maria's raised her hand. Maria, you have a question? Um, it's not particularly about um, the, it's more so about the current state of the industry, um, financial okay. accounting or whatever areas you all are working in. How has the pandemic, and if you are working from home, how has that um, change how you do your job and deal with clients and the um, the things that clients are requesting from you on their end? How has have things changed in that manner? Ross, you want me to start? Take that? Right. So it definitely has changed um, the way we've learned to work. Uh, almost 22 months ago in March of 20, uh, we went virtual, 100% virtual in one weekend. You know, had you asked me a week before, could we do that? I said, no way. <laughs> um, and we were doing audit work virtual uh, for eight months. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of Zoom, Teams, WebEx, whatever you want to call it with clients. Um, we've got portals that they can upload information. Uh, we did, we have virtual audit rooms that we work in. Um, you know, so we made it work and we found out that some people like to do work virtually. Uh, we figured, we figured out we can do it. Um, what I would tell you as we have coming into this busy season is where possible we will be back at client locations. And part of that is, part of auditing is being able to listen to your clients, read their faces, and making sure that as you're doing your audit work, what they're telling you makes sense. It's a lot harder to do that virtually. Um, and then, then just the training aspect is when we all work around a large conference room, um, my managers, our in charges can look at a young associate's facial thing. Are they struggling? Are they spinning their wheels? It's just so much easier to ask questions right across the table versus getting this instant messaging or sending an email. Um, so we can absolutely do it. Uh, what we have found to kind of alleviate out of town travel is if a three week audit was out of town, we might do two weeks on site and one week. Uh, back in the office virtually. So it's made us rethink how we do the audit. Uh, I think it's made us better, uh, but we do like that face-to-face -face with our clients. Uh, you get to know them better and just some of that culture, uh, the RSM culture that you, you want to keep there and you lose that if you do everything virtually. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, good question. Ross, would you like to add anything to that? Well, back when Jim and I started our career, everything was in paper and, you know, you dealt with your clients much more face to face. So thankfully, when the pandemic hit, you know, everything was online and we were able to operate remotely. Our computer systems and tax and audit systems are all online. So paper is much less part of the process. So, um, you know, it definitely made it easier. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest struggle is keeping our teams connected, you know, when we're we weren't seeing each other every day at the client site and things like that. So we just had to take extra effort to stay connected to our team members, stay connected to our clients. So we understand what's going on with everyone. Okay. And we do have one more question in the chat, but I thought I saw that Greg came in in the midst of that. So um, <laughs> Greg, would you like to, to introduce yourself? Yes, sorry to be late. Greg Maddox, consulting partner at RSM, and uh, started my career early on at, at audit at a big four firm, um, but moved over to 
RSM uh, 20 plus years ago and, and have focused on consulting. So I've been able to do a lot of different things with companies of all sizes and uh, just solving problems. It's um, a lot of fun. We've grown our consulting business um, very con to be a very substantial part of our overall business now. It's a lot of fun to be a part of. Glad to be with you today. Thank you. So we have a question from um, Mergen. Um, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, what I'd like to do is break it up into two parts. So the first question um, is about what our entry level pos positions look like. Um, and then the second part of the question is um, about the level of experience you need and um, what, what opportunities there are for someone who um, is got, has their bachelor's in accounting. So I'd like to save the second part for just kind of the bachelor level and what specific opportunities uh, for our second part. Um, but I would love for um, you all to talk about um, what our entry level roles look like and perhaps what you look for um, when you're considering a new associate. Greg, fire away, you start. <laughs> sure. Well, I think the accounting uh, program and accounting background is uh, just an awesome place to, to be for career opportunities. You know, from audit and tax and consulting, there are many op options in front of you. And, uh, you know, specific to consulting, uh, there are things around technology. The whole accounting space is so much impacted now by technology automation. So there are a lot of ways to use the accounting background and deploy that skills around uh, ERP systems, around some of the new accounting standards and software supporting those uh, standards. Uh, accounting background is, is very foundational for uh, much of the work we do. Um, so if you look at um, our risk practice, risk consulting practice, understanding accounting controls and how to uh, set up the right structure to uh, put those safeguards in place, uh, understanding accounting is, is a foundational part of it. We have forensic accounting practices. Uh, we have valuation practices that deal with a lot of the um, uh, finance and accounting fundamentals for valuing businesses. So certainly many opportunities to uh, pursue when you look at, at um, consulting specifically. Yeah, and I would dovetail off that and from the audit profession, you know, your, what experience do you need? You know, it's, it's the degree you're getting, the background in college, and then, you know, there's no better thing than on the job training in the public accounting world. So you take that framework that you've learned in college and then we help you apply that uh, to your day-to-day -day job. Yeah, the accounting degree is, you know, definitely a good place to level set and, you know, sets people at a similar starting point. Any related experience you can get with part-time jobs, things like that, um, are always helpful. You know, working with QuickBooks, you know, to just help fill in what you're learning in class. You know, the industry has done a great job of having internships, which just kind of stair-stepped you into the career. And the recruiters will talk about that a little bit later and about how that program works. You know, I think we're definitely seeing a lot of, a lot more focus on technology. So the more you can hone your skills around technology, usage of Excel databases, things like that is just gonna continue to be more and more in demand. All right. So I saw as we had some of our professionals chatting, I saw a couple hands go up, but I can't recall who had raised their hand. So if you want to go ahead and, and come off mute and ask your question, that'd be great.
or you can put it in the chat. Shalisa, do you want to take the second part of that question about the bachelor's degree? Uh, we will in the second oh, part. Okay. We want we want gotcha. we want to give you the floor for this thirty minutes, uh, but Understand. we'll cover all I of bet. that in the second part. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, while you're putting some questions in the chat, um, in the meantime, oh, oh Maria. Maria? <laughs> Hi, I had another quick question. Um, so I was reviewing RSM's website and I saw that um, there's some global operations that you all work with. Is that more so like um, you have a lot of global um, accounts or does RSM have um, operations occurring in other countries or a mixture of both? So we do have- Do you want me to- Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Well, there's two pieces to that, you know, the way RSM is structured uh, and then how we serve our clients globally. So the way RSM is structured, we do have um, obviously the U.S. firm here, which includes U.S. and Canada. Uh, we do have our global network firms across the world where we have more than 100. I think we're in more than 110 countries now. So in terms of RSM's footprint internationally, we also have what we call the um, RSM Delivery Center in India, which gives us, uh, you know, just some very talented, uh, lower cost delivery capabilities uh, to support audit, tax, and consulting that we utilize here from the U.S. as well. Now, as you look at the way our, our clients are structured, we serve a lot of our clients that may be headquartered here in the US, but they may have operations in Asia or South America or Africa, Europe, et cetera. And so uh, we'll often be kind of that central point of contact to manage and help deliver all services to those US-based international uh, conglomerates. And uh, very often we'll be working in partnership with maybe our RSM uh, China firm or, or RSM Brazil firm to, to deliver for those clients. So we, we certainly have a lot, I believe it's over 50% of, of our clients have international operations. So it's a significant part of of our client base that has um, some needs around that. And we do have an expatriate program where you can sign up and if you get selected, you, you could do it a rotation in Hong Kong, Germany, UK. Uh, so we do have a program with that too that allows some international travel if, for people that like that. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, it looks like, um, is it Felania? Felania. Felania, sorry. So you have a question, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to know what are, let me see, what is a typical day or season like for a new associate at the firm? Yeah, so um, what I'll say is we actually have some new associates joining us at one o'clock. Um, so if you want to re-ask that question at one, you'll hear it straight from their mouth. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I've got a question then to pose mm -hmm. to our leaders. So when thinking about just in general, public accounting versus private accounting, what's the difference? So private accounting, whatever your job is at the certain company, you're kind of doing that day after day after day. Not that that's bad, but that's what you're doing. Public accounting, our normal audit is three weeks a year. So factor in vacations, whatnot, you're working on 20 plus audits a year and learning, learning all kinds of things about the company. Uh, you're learning different industries. Um, it's fast paced, it's fast learning. Uh, so you rarely see people start in private and come back to public. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it's very rare. 
um, because the learning curve, you're just learning, doing accounting where when you start in public accounting on the auditing side, I mean, not only are you learning accounting, but you're learning auditing too. You're learning how businesses work, how processes work. Um, so you just, there's just so much more information that you learn and are, you know, open up to that. Um, to me, that's not a better place to start is in public accounting because you get to look at all the different industries. If I went to work at a bank right away, how I don't know if I want to be in a manufacturing company if I've never been experienced to that. So you just get a wide variety of stuff um, that you learn in a, in a short period of time in public accounting. Okay. Yeah, you also have the option if you start an audit, you can go to consulting, you can go to tax. I mean, there's just a lot of avenues. Thank you. I see that Patrick has a question. Patrick, would you like to come off mute and ask your question? Yeah, that sort of uh, answered my question a little bit. I was uh, curious um, if you guys um, required uh, having a CPA or if you guys uh, allowed like, you know, a grace period to get a CPA before, um, you know, before we can uh, be employed. Yeah, and we can discuss it a little bit more in detail soon, but we do require CPA eligibility for our audit and tax positions. Um, there are some consulting <laughs> roles that, that don't require a CPA. Um, so we do require that you be eligible to start full time. Um, although Jim will tell you that he prefers that you have your, your CPA. Um, yeah, um, that's uh, at least I, mostly I complete by it. the time you start. Um, you do have you do have some time. Um, to complete your CPA exam once you start. I think I heard uh, from one of my teachers that the exam may change after 2024 or something like that. So I'm trying to get it done as soon as possible. Maria, did yeah, you I have another question? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I don't know if it's changing or not, but the exam is, it's a test. And in college, you're used to taking tests. When you work full time, at least what I've seen is the last thing you want to do when you get done working is then study a bunch. You're kind of <laughs> done with your that chapter of your life and you're ready to move on to work in the real world. So if you would ask all of our staff people, they would tell you the sooner you get a pass, it just makes life easier for everybody. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Maria, did you have another question for us? No, I didn't. I just keep oh, getting over my Okay. Hand. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, Atul, I see your question um, about the CPT versus OPT. I'll address it uh, very quickly. So, um, RSM, unfortunately, does not currently have opportunities um, where we... Um, are, are allowed to bring on or, or that or where we can bring on um, students who have temporary work eligibility. Um, there are some firms that do. I know that um, the roles that they bring them in in do tend to be um, very few and far between and they, and they would uh, likely be highly specialized. Thank you. You're welcome. So what other questions? So we have about five minutes left with our partners and then we'll transition to talk uh, a little bit more about RSM specifically and, and how to get internship and associate opportunities. Um, but what other questions about the industry, about career paths um, do you have for, for our partners that have joined us? I have a question. Thanks. Um, for our partners, did you all know that you wanted to be accountants like from a young age or how did you kind of discover this career path? Well, I can start. Uh, in high school, uh, I you know, heard someone talk about aerospace engineering. So I went to Iowa State thinking I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. Um, after my first semester of flunking out of chemistry and physics and calculus, I decided I wanted to do something else. So I transferred <laughs> to business. 
And, you know, in my 25, 30 years of recruiting, you know, I think we see a lot of engi former engineering students, you know, that end up in business and accounting. And um, I think the mathematics and just the whole thought process, engineering students and uh, accounting business students, I think, kind of think alike. You know, and originally I thought of myself kind of as a two-year get your CPA and then go work in private accounting. So it's somewhat surprising I've just stayed in the industry, but to me, what's been most industries, just as Jim talked about, is the variety. You're working with different industries, different clients all the time. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll also share as far as uh, early on, I knew I wanted to, I, I liked business. My dad uh, had a business and uh, wanted to understand how business works. And, you know, accounting was just a very tangible way to understand transactions, the flow of things, and how you end up reporting on, you know, tracking your progress as, as, a, as a business. So to me, it was just a very um, uh, fundamental way to understand business, as well as just a great career opportunity, knowing that if you understand accounting, you understand financials, it empowers you to do a lot with your career progression. So those were the things for me that really made accounting compelling. Okay. We have about three minutes left with our partners. I know one thing that I think um, would be a great question to hear from all of you. What are some of the misconceptions about going into a career in accounting? So I know the biggest one is that it's boring, right? So what are some, what are, is that, is that a true or is that, mis is that true or is that a misconception or, and what are some of the other misconceptions about a, a career in accounting? Uh, you know, from boring, if you look at Greg's bio and all the different things our consulting folks do, um, mergers, acquisitions, uh, technology, business process improvement, uh, all of those things are not doing debits and credits of accounting. So the profession has really expanded and, you know, I would say it's fast paced and very exciting. Um, you know, the other misconception I think is that public accounting hours are so much more than private company hours. Uh, and I would say that's a misconception. Uh, if you ask, looked at all my CFOs hours compared to mine, they're probably more hours than I work. Um, so I think there's another misconception. Yeah, that's a great one, Jim. That's that's definitely a, a probably a more prominent one than my boring example. Is is that the hours are over, overwhelming? Ross, anything? I know you have to jump right at twelve thirty. Are there any misconceptions? But a lot of times when you talk to students early on, they're like, well, I'm not good at math, so I don't think I can do accounting, where most accounting is just adding, subtracting, dividing. You know, it's not like engineering with calculus and things like that. Um, you know, so I think a lot more students, if they gave accounting, you know, more of a chance would become good accountants. And, you know, nowadays with technology, you know, we're not doing as many calculations additions you know you're doing everything in excel or a computer system that does the mathematics part for you essentially okay greg anything that comes to mind about misconceptions about uh the accounting profession um i think it's been covered pretty well i do think that there's a place for people that really embrace the technical aspects of accounting and really want to dig in and understand all the nuances of, you know, the FASBs, et cetera. There's career paths for that, but there's also a career path for people that understand the fundamentals of accounting can certainly navigate the, the major issues and in, in accounting uh, matters, but can also just take that from, uh, you know, a different career path ultimately of, from more of an advisory standpoint, building on that accounting knowledge. So I think there's room for both really technical minded folks, as well as 
people that just can understand the body of, of accounting and, uh, you know, grow their career from there. Okay. Um, I see Atul has raised his hand. So we'll take yeah. one last question. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I have a question regarding the uh, difference between an accountant working as a tax, uh, tax consultant and the tax lawyer. So how these uh, two services are different in terms of uh, challenges and uh, the working incentives? Yeah, at least in the United States, uh, to practice law, you have to work for a law firm. So we do hire lawyers who have an emphasis in tax and generally there'll be people who are more specialists either in a tax specialty practice where they're more consultative with our clients, um, but we're not allowed to practice law. We can't write LLC operating agreements or um, purchase agreements on a transaction. So generally the law lawyers that work for our firm are doing more consulting tax research, consulting with our clients kind of from a tax perspective. So the preponderance of our tax people are accountants who've gotten a CPA and are approaching the tax practice from a compliance and a consulting approach. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, um, for, for joining us. Um, I will have a, a slide with all of their email addresses um, at the end. Uh, so if you want to reach out and, and send them thank yous or, or ask another question. Um, but other than that, we'll move into more about RSM and actually how you how you get our recruiting opportunities. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, again, we're going to start talking about RSM. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, put questions in the chat. We're happy to stop and answer. Uh, we're going to go pretty quickly um, through any of this. So if you want to talk more, uh, please feel free to, to, to reach out. All right, so now that you've heard from our partners, we're gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the firm. So let's talk about RSM. So we are the fifth largest CPA firm in the country. So right outside of the big four, um, we were founded in 1926, which believe it or not is gonna be 100 years in a few years. So that's pretty crazy. Um, but I think more importantly, we're the we are actually the leading provider of professional services to the middle market. So we have right about 85 offices across the U.S. and Canada with over 13,000 employees working across all the lines of business. We also have, as uh, some of our professionals talked about, we also have partnerships globally and have a presence in over 120 countries. So with that being said, there are often opportunities to move to other offices based on your personal preferences and as you develop throughout your career. Um, next slide. The next, okay. So this slide kind of a little bit more specifically shows you where our, officer where our offices are located. So just about every single major city in the US. And in addition, we are associated with just about 90 independent accounting and business consulting firms um, across 42 states and in Puerto Rico throughout what we call our alliance network. So this extensive network really allows us to expand our geographic footprint and serve our clients really regardless of their location, which is really neat. Next slide. Okay, so this is one of my favorite slides to talk about. So I mentioned being that we're number one in the middle market. And we accomplished this in part uh, by offering our clients what we you'll hear referred to a lot as the RSM experience. Um, so what does that mean? So to us, it really means being first choice advisors um, and being the first firm that comes to mind when our clients need something. So we do this through our values and what we call our five C's which are our first choice advisor traits. So as you can see on the slide, that includes being curious, caring, critical thinkers, courageous, and collaborative. Um, so, I mean, those are great words, but how do we, how do we use those words to exhibit our first choice advisor um, skills? And that's by doing things like building relationships, by being understanding and empathetic, asking questions, seeking out diverse perspectives, 
obtaining collective ideas, really trying to challenge traditional ways of thinking and communicating complex information really with clarity and objectivity. Okay. And with that, it looks like Maria has a question. Perfect. Hi, um, when you're referring to the middle market, number one, the middle market, what exactly does that mean? You are literally on my next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Yeah, you, you know <laughs> what's going on here. Um, so exactly to your question, what is the middle market? What does that mean? So this is really where RSM, this is where we focus our time and effort. So the middle market includes companies typically that are grossing anywhere from about a million dollars um, to $2 billion a year. So that means that while we do have some very large clients, we're not actively out competing for the Walmarts of the world, if that makes sense. Um, there is a lot of diversity in the middle market, um, and it does make up about 30% of the private sector. So what does that mean for you? So someone that might be coming in um, as an intern or someone as a new associate, what that means is smaller teams, more opportunity to work directly with your clients earlier in your career. So you're not going to be coming on to a team of 25 to 30 and doing one piece of the puzzle. Um, you'll get thrown into to client meetings and you'll get to work on the entire project even very earlier in, in your career. So that's really um, uh, a really cool feature. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I talked about, you know, the RSM experience and being first choice advisors. And another way that we do this is really um, by industry expertise across all lines of business. So, um, and you also might be wondering what industries are in the middle market. And so essentially almost all of them. So as I mentioned, we wanna be industry experts um, as first choice advisors. So RSM really encourages their employees to explore and really find an industry that you're passionate about. So that way you can really hone in on one to two particular industries. Um, in addition, our firm is laid out really in a matrix structure, which means that all our client servers are tied to a regional geography, as well as an office, as well as a line of business. Sorry. <laughs> so as you can see on this slide, the firm has four lines of business, which include audit, tax consulting, and our internal client servers. Um, so the firm really works together by regions, lines of business, and industry in order to really help solve our clients' problems. So there is a lot of cross-functional work um, across all the different lines of business. Um, so for example, Greg Maddox, who um, you all just got to, to chat with, he actually leads our um, lease accounting practice. It's one of our consulting solution sets. So they heavily lean on our tax practice, um, you know, to, to really partner in order to make sure that the client is getting, you know, what they need. Um, so before we get into specific opportunities and the recruitment process, I'm going to pass the baton back to Shalise. And she's going to talk about a little bit more about why at RSM and what makes RSM stand out. Specifically, she'll talk a little bit about our culture. Yeah, absolutely. So um, talking about our culture is something that I love to do. So um, I'm glad that, that that Amy is passing the baton to me. Um, <laughs> So um, one of the things that also go along with our five C's is our values. Uh, and one of the things that we really value is stewardship. Um, so um, the purpose of our stewardship is to be able to build tomorrow's middle market leaders. Um, so a lot of RSM's philanthropic efforts and community efforts uh, focus on children, literacy, education, um, fighting poverty, homelessness, things like that. Um, and a lot of the, the ways that we drive our efforts and stewardship is through the RSM US Foundation, which has uh, several components to it. Um, so there is um, our Birdies for Love, which is kind of our internal fundraising um, event every year. It happens uh, for a couple of months in the fall um, where we'll have golf tournaments, um, kind of pre-pandemic, they used to do the flocking thing where you can get your office filled up with flamingos and you have to pay to get all of these flamingo balloons out, or you could buy insurance against being flocked, um, which I know kind of sounds silly, but it's kind of a fun way um, uh, to raise money. 
We also have Pursue Your Passion, which is internal stewardship. Um, and I've never heard of a program like this at another firm. So um, every year, uh, the firm selects nine employees, gives them nine additional days off of work, and $10,000 literally to go out and pursue their passion. Um, and it could be a wide variety of things. So um, I know a Pursue Your Passion winner um, that used their money and their days off to make a documentary about homelessness in San Francisco. Um, I know a Pursue, Pursue Your Passion winner um, that has a goal of climbing all of the highest mountain peaks in the world. And so he used his Pursue Your Passion money uh, to go climb a couple of those peaks. Um, I know a Pursue Your Passion winter, winner uh, that went to Mexico uh, and helped with, um, I can't remember if it was cleft palate or something about their smiles, but like children who had a medical need, they, they took their Pursue Your Passion uh, money and went to Mexico and helped children. And then one more example that I know of, um, we, had a, we had an employee uh, who took their grandfather, who was a World War II vet, uh, back to one of the battlefields in Europe that, where he had fought. So um, a couple of great uh, programs within our stewardship. Um, we also have a very, very, very strong culture uh, of culture, diversity, and inclusion uh, at RSM. Uh, and RSM has done a tremendous job of weaving it throughout every single thing that we do. In fact, um, we've become um, so effective uh, in, in, some of our, in some of our CDI measures um, that our consulting group, uh, which is actually one of the teams that's actually based in Kansas City, um, has recently started consulting other firms on how they can be more inclusive and more equitable uh, and how they can drive towards um, a, a diverse culture. Um, so a lot of the, what we do uh, around CDI is driven by our 12 employee network groups. Um, so at RSM, one of the things that, we'll, that you'll hear us talk about, uh, our main tagline is the power of under, being understood. We also talk about the power of being you and showing up as your authentic self. Uh, when people ask me what my favorite thing about RSM is, I always say hands down, it is showing up as your authentic self. Um, every firm you talk to will talk about their commitment to culture, diversity, and inclusion. I've never actually heard a firm um, give a phrase or give power uh, to, to showing up as who you are being called and saying the power of being you and showing up as your authentic self. So any questions about kind of us and our culture? I know we went through that very, very quickly. Lisa, I did get a question in the chat that was a direct message okay. to me, um, and if this is better answered in your next section, just let me know, but okay. um, the student asked, is there a particular skill or skills that you see lacking in candidates that would help a candidate stand out? In other words, are there any skills a candidate could work on to become more competitive? Um, I'll be honest, I see... Um, more opportunities and traits than skills. Do, quite often. Um, so students are smart. You all go to good schools. Um, you're getting, you know, for the most part, good grades in your class. It's usually traits. And what I mean by that is um, um, the drive to be successful. Um, I still have students who don't do the networking basics, um, believe it or not. I mean, you know, when I was in when I was in college, you know, the number one thing they tell you is before you go talk to a firm, at least take a look at their website, at least know one or two things about the firm. You would you would I would be I think you would be surprised the number of students um, who will still come and talk to you, who will still make an appointment with you, uh, and when you ask them, you know do they know anything basic about your firm? And they'll say no. Um, so just, just, you know, kind of, kind of the, the, the traits, the hard work, um, the initiative, um, you know, the, the inquisitiveness is, is far more of what I see as an opportunity than skills to be off, to be honest these days. I can add to that as well, um, just with uh, dealing with the consulting side of the business. So looking through a consulting lens, I would definitely agree uh, with Shalise that um, we have several, you know, positions that do incorporate technology and all of our leaders say, you know, you don't have to know any of the technology. We can, we can teach you that. It's all those softer skills that we can't. So for example, 
big thing, um, especially at RSM is, can we put you in front of a client? Do you work well with others? Do you want to work with people? Um, so, you know, some of those softer skills of communication and, um, are you comfortable asking questions? And so again, just to reiterate what Shalise said, it's, it's, I would definitely say it's a lot more of those, uh, of those softer skills. And do you have any advice on how students can kind of maybe demonstrate those softer skills, either in a resume or cover letter? I mean, they can write about examples of times where they've exhibited these traits, right? But I don't know if there's anything else you can add. Yeah, and I don't know that it has to be, you know, in your resume or in your cover letter, but it's, it's more about when you're talking to people and when you're networking um, with people, right? So it, it's, it's about, um, you know, the interview. Um, I would say don't be afraid to be engaged. And I know it, it can be harder um, in this virtual um, environment, but uh, when companies are offering, you know, information sessions, go, ask questions, uh, be engaged, talk to people, follow up, right? So you'd be still surprised at the number of, you know, kind of follow-ups. Um, and I'll tell you that um, things like that go a long way with, um, um, you know, managers and, and interviewers and partners. Um, every single time almost I get a, 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 um, an interviewee sends a thank you email to someone who's interviewed them. They forward it to me and let them know like, oh, this person sent me a really nice, uh, you know, thank you. Um, so it's, st it's still the small things and it's really just, you know, um, you know, the networking and the skills and the talking to people and the following up. They want to get to know you during that interview. So just like Shelly said earlier, it's, it's, be you as much as you can. And I know that's a lot, uh, it's a lot harder um, done than, than said, right? And I think I just said that backwards, but, um, <laughs> but it's really about bringing just your authentic self to your interview as well. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, so RSM has some scholarship opportunities um, that I want to make sure that people are aware of. And we'll go through this pretty quick. Again, our contact information will be at the end. Um, so you can reach out and you can um, learn more and, and get you know, the information. You can also scan the QR code here, um, but we have a few different scholarships. So one is called Power Your Education. 10 students across the nation will receive $10,000 scholarships each uh, to be applied um, starting next academic year. Um, so for eligibility, um, you have to be uh, at about two years until graduation. Um, for accounting majors, that also includes your CPA eligibility. So if you're a junior now um, and you plan to be CPA eligible in May 2024, that still counts for your two years. Um, pursuing a business or technology degree. So that includes uh, accounting, but that's also computer science, computer information, uh, engineering, uh, and not an immediate family member uh, or an employee of RSM. Um, our deadline for this one is February 28th. Um, the application is so ridiculously easy, in my opinion, um, you know, given that, that we're giving out $10,000, you'll create a 30 second video. The topic will be given uh, on the website um, and you'll complete a short application. Um, other scholarships that we have. So we have a first generation scholarship. Five students um, across the country will win uh, a $10,000 scholarship that is renewable for up to three years. So this could be up to $30,000. Uh, this one will require a 45 second video and a short application. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Can international students be eligible for scholarships? That is a good question. Are you nodding because you know, or are you nodding because that's a good question, Amy? I think that's a good question. I do not okay. know. I will follow I up, up on that one. <laughs> okay, Amy's gonna, Amy's gonna see if she can look that up. That is a great question. Oh, I'm going back. Um, Oh, I get it does answer there right there. It says you have to be a U.S. freshman, uh, sophomore, or junior uh, pursuing a business or technology degree. Again, not an immediate family member or employee of RSM and a minimum 3.0 GPA. Um, 
so yeah, so that's more information in a nutshell about our Power Your Education and our First Generation Scholarships. Again, those, um, the deadline for those is 11.59 p.m. Central on uh, February 28th. All right, so a little bit more about actual opportunities with RSM. Um, so the first thing is, I know sometimes people will ask, what are we looking for? So if you're on a four-year track, so if you are a non-accounting major or an accounting major looking for a consulting career that CPA eligibility, we consider that to be a four-year track. Uh, a four-year track could also be um, if you came into um, college with enough credits where maybe your first year you were already considered a sophomore. So even though you're going for the 150 hours, it's only going to take you four years. That's a four-year track for you as well. Most accounting majors who are headed towards CPA eligibility are going to be on that five-year track. Um, so um, if you're on a four-year or five-year track, freshman or sophomore year, connect with us. Um, visit us at Meet the Firms. Um, come to our uh, webinars that we have, um, our different diversity events. Start to have the chat with RSM and get to know us. Um, sophomore year, junior year, um, attend our, um, our leadership program. Ours is called Pathways. Uh, this says summer, but we actually moved it to the winter. We actually had it um, in January, but it's a chance to get to know us and uh, do a deeper dive into who we are in terms of our clients and our firm. Um, so your junior year, oh, sorry, this is coming in. Um, so your junior and senior year is when you are going to apply for internships. So uh, this semester, spring 2022, RSM is interviewing for our 2023 internships. So we do it that far ahead of time. So if you are a current junior on a four-year track, current senior uh, on a five-year track, start to be look, you should be looking for those internships. Uh, and then after your senior year, uh, or looking to complete those internships. Uh, and then after your senior year, um, our, our goal at RSM, um, we enter every single internship relationship um, with the hope that we're going to be able to convert you to full-time. That is always our intention when we bring on an intern. Okay, Maria, you have a question? In regards to the internship, like what, what is our RSM looking for? Is it similar to what you mentioned before? Um, more soft skills or what exactly? Yeah, so, you know, we're not gonna expect you, uh, and I'll speak from an accounting perspective and, and Amy can speak from a consulting perspective. Uh, we're not gonna expect you to already have been an accountant right? I mean, if you have, great. Um, but generally, we're going to be looking for, you know, you to have the required major, uh, at least the required GPA. Um, and then, you know, back to what I was talking to in terms of traits. Are you doing things that demonstrate those traits that we're looking for? So um, have you been working somewhere, right? So, so is there something that you can point to that demonstrates your work ethic? Like, oh, I haven't had a job in accounting, but um, I've been a lifeguard for the past five summers. Um, I've been doing, you know, uh, I have, I own my own, you know, small lawn, lawn care business in the summer, and I've been doing that. Um, you know, there's been people who, you know, are still working at the same pet store. I just, I just hired someone who's been working at the same pet store, you know, since she was 16. Um, but, but, you know, she's, she's got the work experience. Um, involvement in, um, student organizations and campus activities, um, taking on an officer role, uh, volunteer work, demonstrating something that you're passionate about. Um, all of those things are the things that we like to see um, when we're looking for an intern. Anything to add to that, Amy? That was a really comprehensive list, Shalise. Um, <laughs> consulting is, uh, we have, I didn't get into this, but um, the consulting side of the business now has seven service lines. Under every service line, there's multiple sub functions. And sometimes <clears throat> under that, there's even more specific solution sets. So there's a lot happening within consulting. So, um, so really what we're looking for is, you know, dependent on what part of consulting, you know, are you, do you have the, the right major right? Um, so just like Shelly said, and then on top of it, um, are you, you know, involved in extracurriculars and have you been employed and um, have you had a potentially another internship before? 
Um, so of course, we're going to be looking similarly um, to those things as well. And then um, I, I would also say uh, as a kind of blanket statement with consulting is we're looking for individuals that, you know, want to work with other people. So a lot of those soft skills that um, that love to learn, that want to do something different every day, because especially within consulting, your days are never, ever the same. <laughs> yeah. um, so I would just say, you know, on top of what Shalise said, um, those would just be a little bit more um uh, specific things I would say that the consulting side is looking for too. Yeah, and then Partha has a question about opportunities for graduate students. So um, I'm speaking on the audit and tax side um, um, again. Um, typically when you do your internship, it is going to be after you've completed your bachelor's degree, but before you've started your master's, typically. So it, 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 it is technically an opportunity um, for, for a grad student. Um, if you're already a grad student, um, if you have the, uh, the capacity to complete an internship uh, in the winter or summer, uh, sometimes there's still opportunities for that. Um, if you're already into graduate school and, and completing that, um, you'll prob it's probably time to start talking about full-time opportunities. And, and I don't want to add to any confusion, um, but as Shalise mentioned earlier, um, for many consulting opportunities, we don't necessarily require that you have your CPA finished. Um, obviously, it makes you a fantastic asset because as we are <laughs> a CPA firm, um, but we don't necessarily require that you have that completed. So for consulting, really, the rule of thumb is that you would complete your internship the summer prior to your graduation. Um, so that's kind of the rule of thumb for consulting. Um, if you were pursuing that 150, then it would be the summer prior to you, you know, being CPA eligible. So um, I hope that didn't add to any confusion, but wanted to add that. Yeah, um, just highlighting some of um, the opportunities that we have um, for RSM. I did mention that um, our primary focus is going to be our 2023 internships. Um, we do have a couple of summer um, opportunities um, remaining. So if you are looking at um, graduation or CPA eligibility uh, in 2023, um, this would be the time to be looking for um, an audit internship or, or sorry, a summer internship in audit tax or consulting. Um, so we do have um, a couple of opportunities still in Kansas City. If you're interested in one of our other 90 offices, well, Canada probably couldn't help you with too much. If you're interested in one of our other 85 offices um, in, um, in the United States, um, let uh, Amy or me know. Um, we'd be happy to help connect you with the appropriate recruiter. Um, we also still have some associate opportunities uh, for this coming fall uh, and next winter. So this was just to highlight, you know, kind of some of the opportunities that we have coming up uh, and that we still have left to fill yet this calendar year. Yeah, and then okay. for, can, can I, sorry. No, um, go for and then it. for consulting, we don't, um, the consulting side of the business doesn't always hire um, as early as the audit and tax side. So you'll notice that all the positions for consulting right now are going to be a 2022 associate role or a 2022 intern role, just as a side note. Okay, so we have um, some of our former interns and new and incoming associates uh, coming in uh, to the chat. I can't believe it's been a whole hour already. It's just I know. been flying by. Um, any questions about RSM or, you know, kind of the actual recruiting process um, before we, we turn it over to them? No? Okay. I saw Jacob. Do we have Austin or Macy yet? I do not see them. But it's not technically one o'clock, so that doesn't suck. Oh, me. okay. <laughs> By the calendar. Okay. Um, so for the next section, again, we've invited um, some, we've invited two associates and one incoming associate all have completed internships with RSM and either are working full-time or have accepted um, full-time roles. Uh, here they are. We'll go ahead and do introductions. I'll put Jacob on the spot since I did see him. 
Jacob, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Jacob. I am a student at UMKC, getting my graduate in accounting, and I'm saying for my CPA currently, and the line of business I'm doing is consult consulting, particularly technology risk consulting. Yeah. And you're also serving as our campus ambassador this year and doing an amazing job. Yes. <laughs> He's downplaying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll upplay it. All right, I think I just saw Macy. Macy, you are right in time to introduce yourself. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Macy Kinzel. Are we saying anything specific or just? Nope. <laughs> okay, just her name. Cool. Hi, Macy. <laughs> well, who you are. I mean, what, what, what you do with RSM. Got it. Okay. So I'm in the technology risk consulting practice. Um, I am an associate. I started with the firm in July of 2020. So it's been about a year and a half. Um, but yeah, in the TRC practice. And you went to UMKC, right? I did. Yep. I'm an alumni. So I graduated from UMKC in December of 2019. Okay. With my All right. degree. All right. Has Austin been able to join us yet? Not no, I'll, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. All right. So again, so this is back to more like the first uh, section. Um, I know some of you had some questions. Um, so this is your opportunity to get the perspective from um, someone who's done the internship, um, is, uh, you know, kind of a fairly recent grad, is in their associate role or headed towards their associate role. Um, I know, uh, Felania, you had uh, a question earlier on that I kind of asked you to table. Yes, ma'am. So I just wanted to know from you guys' perspective, Macy and Jacob, what is a typical day or season like for new associates at a firm? Yeah, I can go ahead and start. Um, so honestly, every day is different and that's kind of a plus for our role. Um, but typically my clients last about two weeks for an engagement. So I'll be on a client for two weeks. Um, that first week is usually dedicated to walkthroughs and meetings. So, um, you know, that's time with the client to ask them questions, you know, get familiar with their environment and their business processes. Um, the second week, is typically like wrapping up. So we're doing testing on some of the documentation. We are looking at, um, you know, various documentation from the client. We're putting together the report because that is ultimately what we're getting, giving to the client is the report with all of their observations and um, recommendations from us. So um, that would be typically what an engagement would be. Sometimes there are longer engagements though. Um, Typically, though, the ones I work on are about two, two to three weeks. Cool. Yeah. Um, just, from, uh, uh, go ahead. Just going off of that, I'm not currently an associate, but as an intern, you're doing the same thing. I like the same process. And it's like you feel like you're part of the team because they're giving you a lot of what they do. And so you'll be doing very similar things to what Macy was just talking about. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So what other questions do you have for our former interns and new or incoming associates? I have a question for them if none of them do. Go for it. Okay, so obviously Macy and Jacob are fantastic and they, um, I know for example, Macy did multiple internships, um, but I would love to, I know how talented they both are. So I would love if uh, both of them could maybe weigh in on, you know, what, why RSM? Why, you know, why did you go with RSM? What was that deciding factors? Yeah, so, um... I did several, several internships even before picking RSM. So I really just wanted to like get as much experience as I could so that I could make an educated decision when I was, you know, at the time to choose a job. So the biggest piece of advice I could say is to make sure you just take any opportunity you can to learn. So for example, I interned at Commerce Bank and DST before I interned in public accounting. I found that private accounting was not for me. <laughs> and so that was when I was like, okay, let's go to public accounting. I did the summer leaderships at multiple firms just to kind of see what the cultures were like, 
how they compared. You know, I would ask questions if I could about the culture because I wanted to make sure that I was in a place where I felt comfortable and, um, you know, could grow. So um, in doing the summer leaderships, I found the RSM was a really good fit. I did a audit internship and then, um, so I did a busy season audit internship to kind of get a feel for what audit would be like. And then I did a summer um, consulting internship and I got to pick. So that was super nice and kind of unique, I would say. But if the firm is a really good fit for you, they will make it work and they will find a spot where, you know, they want good talent. So they will keep you wherever, they, wherever you're fit. So I would say I chose RSM because the culture was just a really good fit. I liked that everyone was like really genuine and honest and upfront. Um, the team I'm currently on and Jacob will be joining here shortly. Um, you know, they were just really real and they gave us real work. You know, they treated us like, um, you know, as an intern, they treat you like an associate. So I just really like that experience. Yeah, similarly to Macy, I also started in private accounting at a bank and it was doing that for a while. And like, it wasn't, it got very boring. It wasn't challenging me. And so when I got this opportunity to do an internship at RSM, like what Macy was saying, we get treated like an associate. So you get challenged and you learn a lot and you grow a lot. And that always doing something new and always learning something new is really um, appealing to me. But also just the culture at RSM really set themselves apart being super caring like in the interview process for me, like I had a life event which caused me not be able to show up to interview and they worked around to give me a special day to be interviewed, which really showed me how much they care about people. And just like the directors and like all the people on my team, like talked to me, asked me how I was doing or got lunch with me to just make sure the job's going well and how I could be improving, how they could be helping me. So the people and just like the growth I got from the internship is why I just chose to become an associate here. Thank you guys. Um, I believe Austin was able to hop in. Um, Austin, if you wouldn't mind, could you give us a, a brief introduction? Sure. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, my name is Austin Trevelyan. Um, I am a, a management and um, strategy consultant. Uh, I've been with the firm for four years. Um, <clears throat> I went to um, Rolla or Missouri University of Science and Technology. Um, and I was a uh, pathways and intern and then transitioned to a full-time employment. So kind of had the uh, entire journey um, from the RSM uh, recruiting standpoint. Um, and uh, formerly I was doing ERP consulting, if you're familiar with what ERP is. Um, not, what is that? <clears throat> that is uh, enterprise resource planning. So, um, a lot of colleges you work with uh, SAP, um, Microsoft Dynamics, or NetSuite Oracle. And so I was focused on working with um, business systems. Um, and then recently I just switched over to um, mergers and acquisitions consulting within our management consulting practice. So, yeah. And don't let any of those words that Austin just said <laughs> scare you because to my earlier point, um, you do not need to know any of the technology, um, you know, <laughs> you so the don't, don't let any of that scare you. Like, oh, I've never heard any, any of that. So <laughs> a lot of acronyms, a yeah. lot of acronyms. Yeah. So Austin, when you came in, um, Macy and Jacob were just asking or just answering, um, why they chose our RSM. So can you talk a little bit about your, your exploration and then what, what made you ultimately choose RSM? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as I alluded to before, um, came in and did the Pathways program, um, kind of got intrigued my interest. Um, I had thought that the, um, the depth that um, RSM offers in terms of different areas of consulting, um, also being a tax and audit um, <clears throat> company, uh, was pretty interesting. Um, There's a lot of different, um, you know, services that we're offering. And so that's probably the number one thing was just uh, the ability to be exposed to a bunch of different areas. Um, I like the fact that RSM did not try to stick me into one specific area and um, they at least allowed me to explore all the different opportunities. Um, and then on top of that, I just felt that uh, here in Kansas City, 
um, the uh, <clears throat> the environment, the the work environment. When I took my internship, was uh, kind of what I was looking for. is very friendly, uh, very engaging, and, uh, and it was nice to work with people my age when I was at that point in my career. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's uh, other than that. I mean, it's just a great RSM is a well-rounded company and a lot of opportunity, room for growth. Did any of that spark any questions? Oh, so was that a question are, for me? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I didn't it was hear a, that. a question for the students. Okay. So where are, um, to the students, where are some of you in your academic careers? Are you early on? Are you at a time when you should be looking for internships? Where are you in your, your careers? We got a fourth I a, year. I see a fourth year. Okay. This is my second year, I'm a sophomore. Okay. All right, so fourth year. So Trey, are you looking for, in, for an internship? Okay, so Nicole's getting your master's. You'll be finished in December. So are you all looking for internships? Do you have your full-time roles? Uh, have you started to have you started to explore where are you in, in your careers and in your networking? Uh, so, yeah, for myself, um, I haven't really, you know, explored um, internships. And so I'm going through whatever is available, like through, you know, this boot camp and whatever else I can find to help me figure out where I need to start to find internships. Okay. 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 So um, I'll ask you all, um, and it'll be more from a public accounting firm standpoint, but um, so we had asked, we had some partners on um, earlier, and we asked them about the biggest misconceptions about um, going into um, a public accounting firm. I'll say for you all, since you're all in consulting. Um, so, what are some of, what are some of the misconceptions that that you think people have uh, about uh, working for a public accounting firm? Well, right off the bat, the biggest misconception is that you have to focus and do strictly accounting work. Um, <laughs> right? I, I personally, <clears throat> excuse me, I personally. Uh, don't want to wake up and do accounting. Uh, you know, that is uh, the one subject in school, either in college that I dreaded. Um, and then I have a little brother that is an accountant. So, you know, teach their at own RSM. in that regard. Yeah, at RSM. Um, so working at a public accounting firm, uh, I strictly do management consulting. So I work with systems. I work with people. Um, that's where my, um, that's where my focus has always been. And that's where I want my career to go. So um, it, it was nice to draw that distinction and not have to do accounting every day. Yeah, I definitely agree. Agree there with the accounting work. I have my accounting degree. It was very hard to get. And <laughs> I don't really do a lot of accounting now, which is, which is, in my opinion, super great because accounting was not my like forte, I guess. I was okay at it. I got my degree, obviously, but um I'm just, I like the public accounting culture. I like the clients that we work on. I like, um, uh, you know, how much fun we truly have. And, and I wanted that, but I also didn't want to have to do auto tax work. I would have. So I guess I can back up a little bit. When I did my audit internship, I kind of went into it with the mindset of, you know, doing the two years and kind of seeing what my options would be. And um, with consulting, I can grow, you know, all the way up to principal within the firm and not have to have, you know, my CPA, not have to have, um, you know, those, that really hard certification. Um, I am working towards my CISA right now. So that's my certified information systems auditing certification. So um, there's plenty of other certifications out there that you can do that are more detailed to your job. Um, so I would just say, one of the misconceptions would be the CPA, but there's a lot of other certifications out there. 
that on the consulting side um, you can get and, and continue growth. Let me add on to what Macy said is that since we are a CPA firm, there's a lot of value in having your CPA. So Both, um, yes. definitely, <laughs> you know, for individuals that, you know, are planning on it, it's definitely still, um, you know, a great value add regardless of where you go. For me, um, I think one of my misconceptions was that like, I wouldn't be doing the real job or like adding value. And like, I just thought I'd be making copies or doing like things like that. <laughs> and like, they actually do like tr give you things that like the associates do. And like, you actually do get to like learn. And it's like, like Amy was saying about like, you don't need to know the terminology and stuff. They'll help you. You can ask questions, but like you actually get to do the job. And I really enjoyed that. Okay. What else? Um, I, in, I was just about to oh, say, it looks like there's one in the chat. Me. Never mind. Oh. There's actually one in the chat. So answer that first. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I think one of the misconceptions about public accounting firms is that the long hours are required and work life balance is not existent. Do you find that that is a misconception or is it accurate? Well, that question uh, can be cut both ways. I mean, um, you know, depends on which line of business you're working. Uh, I know that. For, for audit and tax folks who are you know predominantly accounting um, when it's their busy season, which is right about now, um, they do put in a good amount of hours, but that's any accounting firm in the world that you go work for. Uh, within consulting, um, I probably should have hit on one of the facts that I love about RSM is my work-life balance. Um, I've found that it's very flexible. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to do a bunch of traveling in my free time. Um, I've had the ability to uh, utilize uh, when you get to a senior associate position, you get self-managed time off, which is uh, a new trend, I think, in the business world. Um, the ability to take as much time as you need in a responsible matter. Um, so for me, um, I would say that I work a normal workload. Um, of course, when I have big projects or deadlines that I need to meet, um, anywhere you work, then uh, any type of business, you're going to have to put in some more hours in that regard. But for the work-life balance, I find it great. Yeah. And I'll add to that because um, I, I do believe in being candid. Um, so if you are looking to pursue an audit or tax career, um, they call it busy season for a reason, right? Um, so, you know, kind of February through April 15th or 16th or whenever the tax deadline is around there, you do work a lot of hours. You do. Um I will say a couple of things. Um, one is it balances out because historically during the summer, uh, when you want to be off anyway, right? Um, there's a lot more free time. Um, it's a lot slower. Um, that's where, you know, kind of a lot of the balance comes in. So that's where um, our, our company actually really strongly encourages you uh, to take time off in the summer. Um, and then, you know, I'll also say it goes back to our, our, our firm caring. Um, I'll give a little bit of an example. Um, for campus recruiting, we kind of have busy seasons, right? So fall recruiting is very busy and very stressful for us. Spring recruiting is not as busy as fall recruiting, but it's quite busy for us as well. Um, after a particularly stressful and demanding fall recruiting season, um, our director actually mandated that we take at least two days off in November. <laughs> um, and so like all of us were, were kind of I mean, you know, kind of required, um, you know, to take some time off. Um, so find a firm that's caring and find a firm that does have that balance for you. Um, as Austin mentioned, um, we do have, once you make it to the senior associate level, what we call self-managed time off, um, which means nobody is telling you, hey, you only have, you know, two weeks of vacation. Um, you have as much vacation and time off as you can responsibly handle and still um, you know, maintain um, your level of performance at, at your role. So um, again, just want to be candid. Busy season is busy. <laughs> busy season is, is you know, kind of 50 to 60 hours a week uh, for about that, you know, 10 or 11 weeks of the year, uh, but it does balance out. 
That's a great point, Shalise. And, and to Austin's point as well with consulting, certain groups do have a busy season and some don't. It's just dependent on what project they're working on, what stage of the project they're in, right? So I think it, it's all balances out, whether it's all through February through April or it's scattered through the year. Or for example, I know Macy's group, um, IT risk, their busy season's usually in the fall. So, you know, everyone has a busy season or a busy project or it all, like she said, it all balances out. That was a great question though. What else? Emily, I think you had a question or, or something you'd like us to share. Yeah, um, I had a question for Macy and Jacob since you both are UMKC alum of the accounting program. Um, do you feel that it prepared you for your current role or career goals that you're aiming to achieve? And are there any resources on campus that you use to help you kind of get where you are or that opened your eyes that you think stu our current students need to utilize to help them? And I just learned, I just noticed an error on my slide. Jacob was a 2021 summer intern, not a 2022 oh. summer intern. <laughs> no Sorry. So yeah. that was a long question, but. Answer how no, you're good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, Emily. Um, so I would say there were several resources and things that pre prepared me for, like, I want to say, like, post college work life, I guess. So I would say being involved on campus is probably number one. I was an Alpha Kappa Psi and Beta Alpha Psi when I was on campus. So um, Alpha Kappa Psi is a professional business fraternity. I was the treasurer and I was president at one point. So just like taking those leadership roles, I found it made my interviews so much easier because I had a million, that's dramatic, but like I had so many examples of, um, you know, like problems I solved and, um, you know, just working as a team and having that like leadership mindset. Those three things will help you so much in your interview because, you know, they're looking for examples of how you're a great worker. And I would say that, that being in those groups definitely can help you prove that. Um, another one is utilizing the Career Center. So I also worked in the Career Center um, throughout college. So I kind of had like a, a background uh, or behind the scenes look at that. But I would say just utilizing the career counselors, they talk to the recruiters firsthand they know what jobs are out there. They know what the firms look for on your resume. They know how your resume should look. They know recruiting timelines. So if you don't know when you should be applying, ask the question and they will tell you exactly what you need to know. So I would say those two things were the biggest things that, that I used. Yeah, um, I would agree about getting involved. Like that really helped me in my interviews too with like some of the clubs that I was a part of, giving practical examples of like, how I dealt with someone with conflict or something like that. And so like definitely get involved on campus. Don't just go to class and leave, but also like get to know your professors and ask them questions and advice because they're there for a reason because they know stuff and like they've helped me a lot in my path. And then um, Handshake was another resource I as how I found the RSN internship. And so that was really a good resource to find internships. Advice. It's a little book plug for the Career Center. Oh. Is there any other questions? Okay. Um, well, I will go ahead and um, you know kind of start to to wrap us up. Um, again, a reminder: we would absolutely love to connect with you. Um, if you are interested in just learning more about RSM or any of the opportunities that we talked about, or if you're curious to know if there's any opportunities that we didn't talk about, um, please use your phone, scan the QR code, um, provide us with some information about you. Uh, Amy or myself um, will be certainly uh, happy to get, get back with you and uh, have, you know, kind of a more specific and tailored conversation uh, to your interests. Oh, I heard a dang. Oh, someone's trying to come in. It's yeah. four minutes still, but I let them in. Okay. Um, and I'm going to post, uh, Shelly, since we're wrapping up, I'm going to post okay. some links in the chat for our 
Beta Alpha Psi um, accounting fair. Uh, that's really more like a networking event. Uh, so please come and talk to, I mean, RSM will be there. If you can talk to RSM and other uh, firms if you're interested in learning about their opportunities. And again, it's just more networking, uh, making sure you know the timelines of when internships are opening and things like that. And then we also have our virtual business career fair um, on February 17th, and then our in-person one on the 18th. So I'm going to post links to all of that. And then if you have any questions, be sure to email us in the Block Career Center, um, blockcareernet at umkc.edu, or contact us through Handshake. Um, yeah, so please register for all these things if you're not already. Yeah. And thank you so much, Shalise and Amy and Jacob, uh, Macy, Austin, and all your partners. This was great. Okay. At least do we want to mention the tabling event coming up? Oh, yeah. oh. well, Jacob, do you want to mention the tabling event? <laughs> yeah, so we will be tabling. I think it's from 12 to 2 on the 1st. And so I will be there. And uh, I think at least an audit associate will be there, too. So if you have more questions, feel free to like come up and talk to me. And we'll be happy to meet you in person. There may or may not be some goodies at the table, some <laughs> snacks. So right. I would definitely encourage you um, to visit with them. All right. Well, thank you everyone for taking an hour and a half to, to join us. And um, we'll look to talking with, with, with some of you soon. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.